What's up everyone? So I've been to Vegas countless times, especially with me being a DJ music producer, being very well connected in the nightlife industry, you know, being here in LA especially, it's only a four and a half hour drive. I'm pretty much in Vegas all the time and I cannot tell you how much I love it and how amazing of a place it is to visit. And I get asked from a lot of friends, family, you know, people online through messages and comments saying, hey Mark, I'm going to Vegas for the first time, what should I do? Or I'm gonna do this, this, and this, and I'm making Vegas part of that trip. Do you have any suggestions? Do you have any tips or things I should do while in Vegas? And I feel like when it comes to Vegas, like a lot of different places, but I think Vegas especially, there's a right way to do Vegas and a wrong way to do Vegas. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the five things that I wish I knew before partying and visiting in Vegas. Number one, do not pay it again to any club. Now this depends on night to night, this depends on so many different weekends, and I'm gonna get into this a little bit later on in the video, but honestly, even if you're a guy, and obviously as you can imagine, girls always get in for free to Vegas clubs, that's just the way it works, but even as a guy, I always get in for free, and it's not just about having these crazy connections, but if you meet promoters, usually the way it works is as long as you have a girl with you, guys are in for free. Usually it's about a one-to-one -one ratio, obviously. You can have as many girls as you want, but for however many guys you want, usually has to be a one-to-one. -one. And in addition, when you talk to a promoter, usually they give you some type of window. So for example, they say, guys free from 10 a.m. to, or excuse me, 10 p.m. to 1 a.m., girls free from 10 p.m. to 3 a.m., or, or something along those lines. Um, and then they'll say it has to be a one-to-one -one ratio in your party, or something like that. I mean, obviously, it changes from night to night, so make sure when you do talk to a promoter, you know, you get things very specifically done. I will say, I've linked this below to another video I did where I talk about the five things you should never say to a Vegas promoter. They will be very helpful, especially if you're looking to go to the nightlife or go to the, you know, the clubs and experience the nightlife in Vegas. You definitely want to know how to talk to promoters. So, suggest watching that video. I've got a link listed below in the description. But overall, when it comes to going out in Vegas, I never paid for club entry. You know, I even have heard of girls paying the full cover, which I think online is something like 80 bucks for just like a random night. Like to me, that's absurd. So never pay to get into any club in Vegas. There's some very unique situations, which brings me into point number two. Do not go on a holiday weekend. Now, I know a lot of people tell me like, hey Mark, you know, I don't know what you're doing, but on Memorial Day weekend, I'm going to be in Vegas. Or on Labor Day weekend, I'm going to be in Vegas. Or for Halloween or for, uh, you know, some other big holiday event, people hit me up and say, hey Mark, I'm gonna be in Vegas. The truth is, going during a holiday weekend is the worst way to do Vegas. I promise you, Vegas is always crazy. No matter when you go, it's gonna be a good time. But when it comes to going on a holiday weekend, all the hotels are extremely overpriced. You know, even the clubs like I talked about, normally you can easily get in for free as long as you know people, but during the holiday weekends, that goes out the window. Like, I've had people hit me up saying, hey Mark, I'm here on this holiday weekend. Do you have any promoters that could get me in for free? And I say, hey, you know what? I'm well connected, but on a holiday weekend, pretty much every guy always has to pay about 100% of the time. I've even heard of sometimes if it's that crazy, everyone has to pay. Girls, guys, it doesn't matter. So I will say, and I can not stress enough, especially it's just so hectic, it's, it's so packed, and don't get me wrong, I do like high energy situations, but on a holiday weekend, it's just not fun. That's the best way I can word it. Just, especially the plane tickets getting to and from Vegas, everything's jacked up in terms of the prices. You know, it's just an absolute nightmare. Even still, and this is a bit of a gray area, but even on like EDC week or EDC weekend as well, that is a time that unless you're going EDC, I cannot suggest enough, probably don't go to as well, you know, because it's gonna be crazy. Now, obviously, if you're going to EDC, and I love EDC, this is actually a uh, EDC hat, then obviously that weekend's amazing. That entire week actually is nuts. But in terms of if you're not going to EDC, if it's not your thing to go to, like, say, an EDM festival, you just wanna go to Vegas and experience it, I cannot suggest enough, go on a non-holiday weekend. Number three, it's pretty cheap if you do it right. Now, all these steps I'm giving you, obviously, are meant to help you out so you spend the least amount of money and have the most amount of fun, essentially getting the most bang for your buck. But I cannot tell you how many people have either talked to me or have heard in conversations saying, oh, you know what, I can't wait for Vegas, but I got half a thousand dollars in the bank. And I'm like, what do you mean you need a thousand dollars in the bank? They're like, oh, well, if you're going to Vegas, you have to have at least a thousand dollars. And I'm like, where is this coming from? And granted, if you want to gamble, that's a whole different story. I'm not much of a gambler, so that may, obviously if you are gambling, that may or may not, you know, change your financial situation, obviously. But overall, when it comes to, you know, saving all this money, I know so many people have said to me like, oh, I need to have $500 minimum. Or like I said, I heard that you have to have $1,000 minimum to go to Vegas or else it's not fun. 
completely, completely false. Not only going to the nightlife, but walking around the strip, and obviously going to be talking about all these different things. There's so many different attractions and things to do in Vegas that are completely cost-free. And especially if you have a car, if you get a rental, I mean, you don't have to have a rental, to be honest. You can just stay on the strip and walk everywhere. But the truth is, when you go to Vegas, it really is probably no joke one of the cheapest vacation spots i go to you know especially when i go there on like a random weekend if i happen to go up there i'm never worried about like oh you know what like i don't want to blow a ton of money this weekend i know if anything i'm probably more likely to blow more money here in la than i am in vegas which is pretty funny you know i mean granted the gas there and back obviously in terms of the drive i have to factor into but besides the point it's extremely cheap so if you're looking to go to vegas but you're like oh you know what like i gotta save up to have x amount of money i promise you if you do it right Staying in the hotel is probably the most expensive thing on your entire trip. Number four, you can drink anywhere. Now, obviously, be safe. Only drink if you're 21 and older and be responsible. You're out in public. As you can imagine, there are always cops everywhere because, you know, it's Vegas and things get a bit rowdy. Just be safe. But when I say you can drink anywhere, you can literally bring a handle of vodka if you want to all the way down to a miniature bottle and drink on the strip out in public without any issues, you know. Compared to, for example, like New Orleans with Bourbon Street, you have to have the alcohol in a special cup. Not the case in Vegas. And when I say you can drink anywhere, I literally mean anywhere on the strip. Like, I've gone out with people sometimes, and like, say, before you leave the hotel, I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm going to throw out this drink. You know, I, I don't want to be walking around with it. But if you go to a club, for example, people will have a beer or a mixed drink or whatever they're drinking in line right before they go up to actually, you know, get searched or go into the club. They'll just throw it out. So when I say you can drink anywhere, like, my biggest suggestion to a lot of people is... Anytime you're about to leave the hotel room, you go into a club, you go into a bar, or a different event, bring the drink with you. Don't throw it out. Don't worry about that. Like, have fun. And I cannot stress enough, be safe. Obviously, drinking once in a while while being responsible, yeah, it can be fun. It can maybe enhance your experience. But I'm telling you in Vegas, especially the way it works, the last thing you want to do is go there and have some really bad experience happen. And I cannot tell you how many times I've heard of someone going, going way too crazy, way too hard. And guess what? You're in public or you're on a street with cars flying by, you just never know. So don't mean to sound like a dad here, but look, always be safe, especially when drinking. And number five, last, definitely not least, is walk. Now I know a lot of people when going to Vegas usually plan out in terms of like the clubs or something they're doing. So they'll be like, all right, you know what? On this night, I'm going to Excess. The next night, I'm going to Omnia. The next night, I'm just gonna stay in the hotel and gamble, and then I leave. I'm gonna do two or three days in Vegas. I'm. You have to trust me on this, especially if you've never been. I cannot tell you how much I can emphasize this. Spend one night, pick one night, or even maybe like about four hours, to be honest, just walking on the strip. Each hotel you can obviously you know, walk into for free, if, even if you're not staying there. I know that sounds dumb to say out loud, but just want to say that at least for context purposes. And each hotel has amazing architecture and all these unique things set up and the lights and the colors. Like, especially when I bring people to Vegas for the first time, usually, the unless there's something really unique going on, the first night and say, hey, you know what? Let's grab a couple drinks and we can walk around and just explore the entire ship. The amount of stuff on the ship, and like I said, the architecture and the unique crazy things that they have in these hotels. I mean, you have to imagine, there's like billions of dollars put into that ship for all the hotels, the, the nightlife, the scenery, everything. And I think too many people go to Vegas and get so caught up in, you know, oh, I have to go to this club, I have to go gamble, I have to go to the Cirque du Soleil show. And don't get me wrong, all those shows are amazing, you know, the magic shows and all that kind of stuff. And the nightclub's obviously second to none. But the truth is, just walking along the strip, uh, the strip with some of your friends, you know, having a couple of drinks or just go sober, it doesn't really matter, is one of the best things to do in Vegas, especially if it's your first time there. And I cannot stress enough. I know a lot of people, when they come with me for the first time, they're like, oh, they're like, really? You don't want to go to a club first? Or you don't want to go straight to the bar? And I'm like, no, like, I'm telling you, just walk. Like, the amount of stuff you're going to see is just super incredible, you know? And obviously, usually after doing that, people are like, wow, it's insane how much just work and, and incredibly creative talent just went in to making that ship and it's evolving every single day so cannot suggest this enough especially if you're going for the first time plan a day if, if you actually really press for time you're only going like say for two days or a weekend maybe plan like three or four hours maybe do it as your pre-gaming i don't know if you want to go to a club instead of taking a lift or uber there which i cannot suggest enough to not do anyway because the vegas trip is the worst traffic spot so if anything you're probably fast off walking but plan it if you're pre-gaming you know grab a couple drinks Spend a few hours walking all the way to the club, but check out all the amazing sites and everything. Like, I cannot suggest that enough. 
So those are five things I wish you knew about Vegas before visiting there and before parting there. I really hope this video was helpful. Obviously, like I said, there's a right way to do Vegas and a wrong way to do Vegas. And for this video, hopefully all these tips help you choose the right things and have an awesome time. But like I basically saying in the end of all my videos, if you do have any questions or comments about visiting Vegas or going to Vegas or just anything, especially when it comes to traveling as well, definitely post them in the comments.